Hi guys, 1.9 trillion COVID bill got fully approved and 1400 checks are on the way. Congrats to everyone who will get them. However, in this video I will be analyzing whether it's smart and necessary to send those checks or it's another leftist idea which can cause the inflation. Let's start from the official motivation. If you listen to the mass media, they usually tell you that people are suffering, many folks lost their jobs and small businesses are getting bankrupt and therefore that $1400 checks are life-saving. All these are actually true and some people are suffering of COVID, but there are so many people who are not suffering and some people are actually getting better in COVID times. And my question is like how many of those people who don't really need any help will get those checks anyway? If these are just 5%, I think we are fine, but if it's 50%, maybe it's a problem. The usual Democrats counter argument that rich people don't actually get those checks is that they actually limit the income of those who are going to receive those checks. So for a single person it's 75k per year and for families it's 150k according to 2019 tax return. Well, for 75 cases per year as a single person, you can have a pretty good life in cities like San Francisco. And 150 cases for families looks quite good as well. It's actually 2.2 times larger than the medium household income in 2019, which was 68,000. I'm not saying that these people are extremely rich, but I think they're quite well standing. And of course it was in 2019 and maybe in 2020 those people lost their jobs and now it's a different story and these people actually need some help. Okay, you're all wondering how many Americans are actually going to get those checks. Uh, what's your guess? Maybe 60 or 70? Google tells us that all these checks cost 422 billion US dollars. If you divide it by 1400, it makes 301 million of people. And the total US population is 328 million of people, which means it's 91% of population. While you have 10 million of illegal immigrants who are included in the population but not gonna get the checks, and then you have 10 millions of Americans living abroad who are eligible for this check. So this is basically cancelling out. So it's actually 91% of US population, which is totally insane. I couldn't believe that it's true, so I made my own calculation and I realized that those income limits are actually set not on your total income but on gross adjusted income, which is your total income minus deductions like alimony payments, tuitions and many many others. And that's why so many rich people are going to qualify for that. Now how many people actually lost their job during COVID times? The unemployment rate went from 3.5 pre-pandemic to 6.2 right now, which is 4.3 million. You can assume that those people have some dependents and the average household in the United States is 2.5 people, let's say it's 3, and if you multiply this number by 3, you will have 13 million of people who are suffering because of pandemic. 13 million is not really 300 million. Look, US government could have spent 10 times less amount of money and issued 3200 checks for those 13 million in need. So why didn't they do this? Maybe the idea behind the check is not actually to help the poor. And indeed these are called stimulus checks, which means that they are designed to stimulate the economy and make the recovery faster. How does this supposed to work, you may ask? So, there was an economist called John Keynes back in 1930s, who created Keynesian School of Economy. Back then, US had the largest financial crisis ever called the Great Depression, and the unemployment rate went up to 25%. To solve this, President Roosevelt created something called New Deal, which was largely based on Keynesian ideas. Which is, if you want to make economical recovery faster, the government needs to inject money into the economy. Let's have a classical Keynesian example. If government gives a thousand dollars to a person, he supposedly saves one third of it, and two thirds of it, which is six hundred sixty-six dollars, will be spent on goods and services. And as a result, this money will go to certain merchants, and these merchants will repeat the procedure in the same way. They will save one third, and then they will spend two third, which is going to be two hundred twenty-two dollars in this case. And this goes on and on and on. If you're good at math, you can calculate the sum of the sequence and it will make $3,000. Meaning that government can spend $1,000 to make $3,000 in hands of people. Think about this for a minute. It looks too good to be true, as all leftist ideas. And obviously there are issues. The problem with this idea was actually spotted by another great libertarian economist called Milton Friedman. He said that there are two big issues here. First, 
Where is this $1,000 coming from? If this comes from the existing taxes, it actually limits the economical output by itself. Because if you would have not taxed this $1,000, it would have been propagated in exact same way automatically. If government borrows the money instead, as they actually do right now, you either have to increase the tax rate in the future or you have to inflate your currency. And none of these options are good. The second issue is the assumption that two-thirds of this money will be spent immediately. This is a very strange assumption, especially for the crisis like this one, when you have so many people who are not actually affected financially by COVID, but still getting those checks. I would assume that most of these people will do the same as they did last time, which means that they will download Robinhood and invest 1400 in Tesla or GameStop or anything else. They don't really care because they don't understand how the market works. Their goal just to gamble and earn some quick money and as a the result they will just inflate the stock market. Just think for a minute what can 420 billion do. So, continuing about Keynesian ideas. They did it after Great Recession and it actually worked. And after this there was a consensus among economists that this is actually a good idea and we should do this in the future. When 2008 financial crisis came, Obama did exactly the same as well as many European countries. But some European countries decided not to do anything. Basically back then we have a bunch of independent controlled experiments. And some economists decided to measure the impact of those stimulus checks. And the result was, if you have a healthy economy, it can recover by itself without any stimulus packages at the exact same speed. Basically the free market is really amazing and it doesn't need any government help. And in the same time, if you have some real issues in your economy, you can inject as much money as you want and it won't work. The most shameful example is Greek debt crisis. When government intervened and did exactly the same, but the economy of Greece is still suffering. Basically, the real economical output per capita in Greece in 2019 is equal to the same output of 2000, which is completely crazy. So right now there is no more consensus about Keynesian ideas and clearly with crises like COVID those checks are absolutely unnecessary. But leftist ideologies can be inflated indefinitely. As you all know, real socialism has never been tried. And now the most intriguing question, will this cause the inflation of US dollar? If you go online there are many folks who are trying to convince you that there are going to be some crazy inflation and you have to invest in Bitcoin. And I understand that for someone without any economical background, it might appear that those money were just printed out of thin air. In reality, it's not quite like that. Those 1.9 trillion US dollars was actually borrowed in private sectors. And there are many international institutions who are willing to lend those money, including some Chinese ones. The only reason why they like to do that is that they believe in stability of US dollar. If US decides to do dirty tricks and inflates the US dollars, those lenders will disappear instantaneously and therefore inflation is big no-no. Alternatively, it's much easier to force US taxpayers to pay a little bit more of taxes for next, let's say, 20 to 30 years. If you divide 1.9 trillion dollars by US population, it will make $5,800 per person. If you divide it by 20 years, it will make only $290 per year, which looks quite feasible. Basically, it's $25 per month for next 20 years. To summarize, we have an old leftist ideas from the 30s that increased government spending will help the recovery of the economy. It's proven wrong experimentally, and we know that healthy economy will recover by itself at the same pace. But Biden will do this anyway, to get the full credit for the economical recovery. Luckily, nothing bad will happen to the US economy because of that, with an exception of the stock market bubble, which will eventually blow, contrary to the leftist ideological bubble which will stay with us forever. Thanks for watching, let me know how you're gonna spend your 1400 and tell me which stocks I need to invest. And don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time, bye!